Hi everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Hub Swap Friend Sim. I in fact did do a friendship path. Um, as it happens, if I had picked the other one, I would have fed her some dinner and talked with her and I would have been friends with her. I also got a bad end for her quest. However, I've decided, I don't know if I mentioned this in the last episode because I recorded it last night, um, I decided that I'm only going to do one ending for each character. Because, uh, like, hey, play yourself. Let me that you can do this. I'm going to pick Damien Chisali. Or Damien Chikali. Kikali. Maybe it's Diamond. Eamon. Or maybe it's Demon, yeah. Yes, someone's approaching. A strange gray skin alien with a cozy looking vest. Perhaps they will make for a good friend. Uh huh. Interesting. What is with the hot dogs? Uh, I guess it's like he's whispering the 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 quirk. Oh, it's hot dog buns. His horns are 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 bratwursts. But his his text quirk is that he has little things that look like his horns on his statements. But they're also hot dog buns. He's bunning his statements. I guess it's like he's whispering. What's up? Oof. Hang on, sorry. I didn't get a good look at you before I started talking. I guess you're really weird looking. I, I'm kind of uncomfortable about this. Your stammering reply eventually conveys you're a lost traveler who's hungry and probably in need of medical treatment. You're also lonely and wouldn't mind making a new friend. Hungry, huh? I see what you gave us. You aren't sure what you're talking about. Then your eyes drift to the obvious target. That exquisite hot dog he's holding. It looks really, really good. Your mouth starts waters, watering noticeably. Oh no. I knew it. Just like all the rest. Your agenda is to have me rel relinquish my delicacy. Don't forget it. I've already been tricked out of two other oblong meat products this week already. I know you think I'm an easy mark due to my blood color, but I still have some dignity at least. Yeah, this guy's actually the lowest blood cast. Um, and I think the most common one as well. You don't know why, you don't know anything about his blood color or why that would matter in this conversation about his hot dog. You're hungry, sure, but at least you didn't mean to cast a threatening glare at his meal. All you really want to do is make a new buddy so you don't feel quite alone in this strange new world. I see. You just want a friend and not my... Sweet meat. Sorry, I get a little paranoid when I walk around with such delicacies in public. Can't be too careful. Folks tend to get that greedy look in their eyes around my warm sausage. These are odd ways to express the things he's saying, you think, but it'd be rude to point that out. Probably best to change the subject, get this blossoming friendship moving in the right direction. Do you live nearby? Yeah, I mean, I used to, I, I used to, I mean. My place was bought by Jones a while ago. Oh yeah, so they have these, like, kill robots called drones. Um, they do whatever the, the monarchy wants them to. And uh, now I don't have a hive, but I'm making it work out here. Oh, that sucks, man. I love the idea of living alone. I don't think I've ever lived alone in my life. I mean, right now, I've got my cats. I guess they count, right? Foraging for tasty things when I can. I've gotten pretty good at it. Talking to people into giving me meat products, I mean. You quickly feel a sense of pity for your new friend. You thought you had it rough, crash landing here, hungry and friendless, and I'm thinking of it feels like your arm is broken. Your ribs too, maybe, but enough self-pity. This is about making a new friend. You ask your friend if there's anything you can do to improve his life. Oh, wait. Are we friends now? Like, is that official? Man, I don't know. Why don't we slow down a bit and see how things go? I'm not saying it's out of the question. I think we should... I think I should take some time to see if you're actually friendship material. Someone I trust, you know? Not just another looky loo getting from my delicacy. Oh damn. You got over your, you got out over your skis again. Of course he's right. This is totally reasonable. You feel sure you You feel sure you can do what it takes to win him over. You make a mental note to avoid looking at or mentioning his hot dog, since it seems to be such a sensitive subject. You do everything in your power to avert your gaze from the hot dog. 
you are aggressively not looking at it. Right there. Don't think hot dog thoughts. Don't think hot dog thoughts. It's working. You don't ever think about hot dogs at all. It's like he isn't even holding one, and no one ever even brought up the fact that hot dogs exist. He seems to notice, on some primal level, your current non-hot dog mindset. He smiles. You pay close attention to the boy's face. It's a very nice smile he has, actually. Very kind, disarming. A few freckles here and there. Mop of messy hair draping over his eyes. I love hair like this. I know it's like the hentai protagonist air hair or whatever, but like, I love hair like this. What a nice friend this would be to have. You think? He's really kind of adorable. If you disregard the prickly attitude about his hot dog. Oh, wait a minute. You don't want to start thinking thoughts that are too friendly. You should dial this down a little bit. Stick to the basics. You just want a cool new friend, nothing more. Try to spark up some non-meat related conversation soon before things get awkward. You wonder about his house. It got bombed? Yeah, you know. Routine drone passed in my hood. A little bombing, a little culling. Yeah, the monarchy just likes to cull some people off. They're very nonchalant about this. One of the sweetest troll characters ever still has uh, culling in her, um, like, in her handle, in her username. Cuttlefish color. That's how it goes around here. I was a lucky one. My Lucis, not so much. Oh, his parrot died. I wonder what they were. Probably a pig, right? That would make sense. It's like, if he's eating hot dogs. He's a goner. Oh, he cry. You don't know what a Lucis is, I do, but you can deduce who is someone important to him who probably died in the bombing. Rather than overwhelmed with annoying questions about the culture, you decide that the right place to show him some sympathy. Thanks. I miss him. Sometimes, I think. I enjoy savory bun delights as a way of covering up the pain. They're so good, though it's hard to stop. I also favored the juicy meats before he died anyway. I just turned the music down. I hope that's a little better for everyone. A little more. It's something we did together. Oh god, maybe it was a... <laughs> maybe it was a, uh, a pig. How do we start talking about my hot dog once more? Let's drop it, please dude. Don't bring it up again. You didn't bring it up, but you don't want to correct him. The boy's clearly grieving. That's fair. You see two faint red tears roll down his cheeks from behind the messy bangs. Your heart can't take it. You have to console this homeless boy somehow. Then he'll definitely be your friend. But what to do? Pat on the back. Keep it simple, pat him on the back a couple times. Everything's gonna be okay. Since he's your new friend, or at least working towards earning that status, he has a new ally to help him with whatever comes his way. He wipes his tears and appears to get himself back together. Your friendly gesture worked. Yes! You're right. I shouldn't let the past get me down. In a way, I'm free. I'm off the grid. They probably think I died. No need to worry about knocks on my door because I don't have a door anymore. Maybe I can live off the land for the rest of my life. Scratching for scrumptious indulgences wherever I may find them by rummaging through awful drums or smooth talking the right mark sounds like the life honestly I'll miss my Lucis but I think he would be proud of me if I can make it without him I can survive on my own oh if I can make it without him if I can survive on my own I know he would be proud maybe I don't even need to leave the planet maybe I can avoid taking the ordeal altogether can't test who you can't find yeah, whenever an, uh, a troll becomes an adult, they leave the planet to go join the war, the conquest, whatever's going on. If I play my cards right, I can probably live to ripe old age on this planet without getting caught. So yeah, that also means that everyone on the planet is like 16 or younger. Like hiding in alleys or sewers, scraping together just enough succulent proteins to keep myself going. Honestly, I don't even get by that long, since I have a much shorter lifespan than most trolls. Oh yeah, your blood color determines your lifespan. So he lives pretty young, whereas the top tier, um, the uh, fuchsia blood, yeah. The the purple one, well, above purple, almost pink, fuchsia. That's what that word means. Um, they, uh, they're uh, perfectly immortal, I think. So I just, I think I might be able to just make this work. You look confused at the last remark, but you don't want to be impolite. He holds up his hands as if to tell you not to be not to bother. I love so as it happens, looking into it, you really don't need to know about Homestuck to get into this. Which, in hindsight, probably is a, a bad form that I said, hey, don't fucking watch this LP if you don't know shit about Homestuck. But like, they they ease you into it really well. And you know what? It is very fun just to dig in and experience troll culture. One of the things about Homestuck that I kind of don't like about it is that it's really hard to feel the baseline of something. Like, y you don't feel the um, what a normal session or a normal life is for anyone. Because everything's extraordinary. 
but this is nice. I like being friends with little trolls. I can tell you're not from here, it's okay. Rust bloods don't live a long time. Blood classes higher than me live progressively longer the higher up you go. Sea dwellers live basically forever. Oh yeah, the top two um, tiers of troll, uh, purple and Purple and fuchsia um, live in the water. They breathe. They uh, they're amphibious. The one below them, the um, oh, what are they called? Magenta blood? No, that's not it. Anyway, the the one that Gamzee is, uh, they, I think they can live in the water. They have a bunch of connotations towards water, but they don't. And they're actually a religious caste. And the one below them are executioners and like stuff like that. It's kind of crazy and seems unfair, but that's how it is. I'd be jealous of them, but I think I'm not. I'm almost grateful I don't have very long to make it in this world. I don't know what I'd do if I had longer. Happy to settle into a nice short ride, keep a low profile, takes in some good meat along the way. Nothing wrong with that life if you ask me. You understand, seems like a tragic story, but if your friend is peacefully his destiny, you might as well too. You offer a sympathetic shrug and continue your impressive streak of consecutive seconds, not looking at his hot dog at all. He smiles again. He seems to be relaxing, gripping the dog a little less tightly. That's good. You know, you're good at listening. Not many people understand me at all. Oh, vengeance. Okay, he's fine. My cat had one of his toys stuck in his mouth, and he was making a weird rattling noise with it. I find a lot of people to be overly possessive, find my overly possessive attitude towards meaty delights to be strange and off-putting. I've heard this more than once and lost some friends that way. Phew. There are some past personal dramas I do not want to think about, let me tell you. But you're different. Maybe you put me at ease because it's obvious you're even lower than me. Oh yeah, so a lot of humans um, are assumed to be the lowest tier of troll society because their blood is, like, bright red. And that blood is actually uh, mutant blood, which is not even on the tier list. No offense, but you are. Jones would vaporize a hornless goof like you, no questions asked. I love goof. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. You love it off. You're not scared, you say. You survive worse. You pat your broken ribs and wince. You clutch your, shore, your sore ribs with your broken arm and wince even harder because of that. Oh, man. Looks like that arm hurt. That arm's hurt, huh? Guess it's broken. Let's see what we can do about that. Here, hold this for a second. He ends you his hot dog without hesitation. Oh, wow. He wants you to hold it? This is a remarkable gesture of trust. You're overwhelmed. You gingerly take the hot dog with a good arm, being very careful. You hold the, do the hot dog from beneath with your fingertips, as this is a priceless, delicate treasure. He takes off his vest and puts it on the ground. He takes off his shirt. You avert your eyes for a moment, then realize that's silly. Nothing particularly decent about this, you suppose? If he's comfortable, so are you. Are we going to see a shirtless troll? We've never seen it, and there was this cool headcanon that um, the, the, the little legs that trolls have from their grub form exist on their on their torso as like a birthmark, so it al it's almost like they have ribs. Oh wow, sure, this troll. Then he puts his vest back on, takes the hot dog back from you, hands you the shirt. Here, make a sling out of it. That should help. He's right, it does help. Broken arm is a lot more comfortable and secure. Shirt smells like meat too. Can't tell if you think that's a bonus or if it's weird. You decide it's a bonus. He's a new friend, he loves meat and so do you. It's your greatest common interest in fact. Nice. You know, I think we make a pretty good team. Um, am I gonna put on, like, con makeup and, and cosplay horns and live in Troll Society with this dude? Because I'm super happy with that. Also, we can't see his ribs, so I can't confirm my headcanon about the, the troll ribs. Although, we also can't see his nipples, so we can't confirm some other people's headcanons. I don't know if I'm ready to officially call him my friend yet, but I may be getting close. You're pushing all the right buttons, man. Just being someone who listens and understands. You have no idea how much that means to me. You still have to hear this. It makes your heart sing. But if you're keeping totally it real, some of these things he's saying are a little strange. The game of this boy wasn't socialized properly by his loosest, you guess? You think that might be his dad, but again, you don't dare ask. Why kill the po uh, not when the positive feelings are flowing like this. Why kill the mood? He gets a little closer and swoops his hand through his thick black bags. For the briefest moment, you catch a glimpse of one of his eyes. Regarding you fondly, your heart beats a little faster. He puts a hand on your shoulder. You're, you're starting to wonder if he's all interested, if all he's interested in friendship. You hope that's all he wants. You don't think you're ready for anything more than that. 
You're desperate for friendship or companionship of any sort. That's moving pretty fast for you. You're nervous to make your feelings clear on this. If he goes any further, you're not sure you have the will to protest? Listen, dude. This gorgeous meat product we both admire. <gasps> I'm thinking. Are we going to eat it late in the tramp style? Maybe we share it. <gasps> I think that sounds good, actually. Oh my, yes, that sounds wonderful. You're so hungry. And you're beside yourself with gratitude that Diamond is willing to share something with you so precious to him. It means a lot. Here, I have an idea. <gasps> he brings his face close to yours. He holds the hot dog between your faces, with both ends of the dog pointing to his mouth and yours. Yes! You're not sure what he wants you to do? Oh, I am. You can't find the breath to ask. It seems like he wants you to... Yeah! <laughs> Yes, if pressed on it, you'd agree the act is uncomfortably erotic. But you have to admit, it is a good way to share food on him while ensuring it gets split about evenly. And you loathe the idea of letting a friend down. It's at odds with your values as a person. You chomp down on the end of the hot... <gasps> as he does with his end simultaneously. Holy shit, that is so good. Take another bite. which And he times his bite perfectly. He's eerily good at this game. It's throwing off your chewing a little bit, which makes you cough a little when you swallow. We don't feel like you can pause without breaking eating rhythm with him. Might be a bad friend. Might be what a bad friend would do. <laughs> you keep going without really quite swallowing as you go. You get closer to his face, which is creating an imminent situation where you're not sure how you handle. They haven't planned for it. It's coming up fast. The hot dog back while collecting your throat is getting a little too heavy. <laughs> and you try to swallow it, but you can't. <laughs> you gag and cough up all the chewed hot dog matter explosively into his face. He recoils, stunned, his bangs are blown back, and he's staring at you with wide eyes. Hot dog and bun bits are all over his face. He says nothing for a moment, and then he puts his hand to his throat. Oh fuck, he's choking! He puts his... puts his mouth definitely. You need to do something. Heimlich, of course. That's what you need to do. You need to save your friend's life. Get behind him, put your good arm around his belly, and form a fist. Punch a fist under his ribs, trying to dis dislodge his masticated delicacy. It's no use. You can't get any leverage. You need your other arm. It really hurts, though. You'll have to make a sacrifice for your friend. Yeah, do it! Yes, yeah, a friend who may have just tricked you into kissing him with a silly hot dog son. You're not sure how you navigate the tricky subject when he's breathing in it. You have to deal with that later. Right now, you have a life to save. Fuck yeah. Put your broken arm out of its sling and grab your other fist in front of his belly and squeeze. You try and try and try. His face is turning a lot blue, deep red. You guess it's because his blood is rust colored. Sure, that makes sense. You yank one more time, your broken arm throbbing in pain. A huge gob of chewed a hot dog launches out of his mouth like a cannonball, and the expulsion creates enough force in the other direction. It actually causes you to lift him up in the air and accidentally suplex him into the mud behind you. What is it with humans suplexing red-blooded trolls? That happens in the comics. You in turn go tumbling over him, and this <laughs> the two of you are soon locked in an inseparable pinwheel of interspecies downhill mayhem. You roll and roll down the grassy incline towards a nearby neighborhood, towards the street. Luckily, you stop just short of the street. The <gasps> demon's neck lands on the sharp edge of the curb, and after flipping in the air once or twice, you come down right on his face with your big ass. You hear a crack. Demon, you slap his cheek a little. No response. He's not breathing. You check his mouth. Throw his clear of hot dog debris. Oh, God. This can't be happening. You look around panicked. This is what you need right now. All you wanted was a friend. You can't be held responsible for alien murder. You have to hide the body. Oh, Jesus Christ. You see a couple of kids creeping out of a nearby house to see what all the commotion is. There's no time. You gotta find a bush or something. They're over there. Little yelly and bushy thing. It's pretty small, but it'll have to do. You drag the vested shirtless carcass over to the bush. Dump the body in the bush, and it's really not convincing. It looks like a dead kid was unceremoniously dropped on top of a small bush in a poor attempt to conceal a murder. You gotta come up with a better... Wait a minute. Someone's standing behind you. <gasps> Hello, stranger. Don't worry about this little mess you've made. I'll take care of it for you. You killed him! Holy shit! Oh, I've got his shirt on. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry, demon. Oh, God. I'm filled with remorse. Oh, God. Oh, no. Um, this isn't going well. <laughs>
Yeah, this is going poorly, I would say. Um, I'm going to keep playing this, though. It's really fun. I will see you guys in the next video, in the next episode of this, in fact. Unless you watch something else by me. Um, I've been Alfred. This has been Hive Swap Friend Sim. We just did Demon's Path. Uh, thanks for coming by. Thanks for hanging out.